The lines in these looping videos are drawn using only one slider. Yes, you heard me right. Only one slider. And this other example too. The technique used is very easy and requires only built-in tools, certainly combined in a specific order. Let me explain you first the basic principle and then go ahead and show you how I build these examples. Let's start by drawing a few splines using the sketch tool. Each spline as a separate object. Add a mouse spline generator to the scene and change its mode to spline instead of the default simple one. To generate a spline along another one, you drag the original onto the source spline field. But what if you want to draw along several splines altogether? Easy, you might say. Add them together under a connect object and use that instead in the mouse spline generator. Let's try it. As you see, nothing happens. The connect object seems to lose its magic when it is used with splines. Of course, it joins them into one object, but mouse spline does not recognize that object as a spline. Now here's a little trick I learned by mistake. Add a spline mask to the scene as a parent of the connect object and drop that one to the source spline field of the mouse spline instead. Isn't that magic? Now change the generation mode to even and lower the number of points. Now I can animate the drawing of lines along those splines using either the start or end sliders. And the beauty of it is that the segments of the guide spline are open for us to manipulate. We can add new segments by drawing new spline objects under the connect object. We can also reorder the splines and experiment with drawing strokes in different sequences. One limitation I found out with this technique is that it works best either with all splines being open-ended or all of them being closed. Everything depends on the first spline in the hierarchy. If the first one is closed, all the other splines will be interpreted as closed. And the reverse is also true. If it is an open spline, then all the following ones will be interpreted as opened. Other than that, I have had no other issues with this setup. Let's now build something good looking using this technique. Start by adding the spline segments that will be drawn. Add two end side splines. Turn one of them into a circle by cranking up the sides number. I'll go with 64. Leave both radii the same. Lower the number of sides for the other, making it a triangle. Let me first rename this spline so that I can better see which one is which later. I'll name this one circle and the other one triangle. Now create an instance of the circle and use a cloner to put a circle on each vertex of the triangle. Set the cloner mode to object and use the end side spline as a reference. In this instance, I'll uncheck the align clones checkbox, but you can play with the settings on your own. Distribution should be set to vertex. Depending on the figure you are using as a reference, you may have to adjust the instances orientation in the transformation tab 
of the cloner object. Collect all items under a null object and feed that master null to a cloner. Now let's apply our technique. First, drag our whole hierarchy under a connect object and then add a spline mask as a parent. Now it's time to scale the clones. You can either scale them down going inwards or up going outwards. I went with scaling them up because in that way I wouldn't have problems with division errors when the clones are infinitely scaled down to a fraction of one. Add a formula effector to the main cloner. In the parameters tab leave only scale checked. Go to the effector tab and add this magical formula into the field. POW open parentheses two semicolon ID close parentheses minus one. Let me explain what's going on. We are scaling everything by a factor of two and raising that value to the power of ID. POW stands for power, then comes the scaling factor number, which is 2, a semicolon, that is how you separate arguments, followed by the exponent. Don't worry if that doesn't ring a bell yet. I'll draw some figures down, hoping you would understand me better. Let's do some simple math. 2 to the power of 0, which is the ID of the first clone, is equal to 1. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 3 is 8 and so on. I want the first clone not to scale so I subtracted 1 from the result. Don't take me for a mathematician. Most of what I discover is by trial and error. You can now see that all the outer circles touch the sides of the triangles. To make the figure more symmetric, let's rotate each clone by 60 degrees in the bank axis. Now let's draw the lines. Add a most spline generator, change its mode to spline, drag the spline mask to the source spline field and change the point generation mode from vertex to even. We don't need to crank up the number of points the most spline generates to infinity. To keep the number low I usually take the figure with the least amount of points in our list of splines and enter a multiple of that. In this case the number is a multiple of 3. I'll enter 99. Now decrease the start of the spline value to 0 and continue dragging it up to 100. This is the parameter that we will animate. As I said, the beauty of this technique is that it allows you to experiment while working. So for example, if I like the drawing to start from the small circles, then the big one and in the end draw the triangle that connects the centers of the small circles, I will change the order of the splines inside the hierarchy and that should do it. But first, let me repeat our technique for the clone of the little circles. So let me first add a connect object and now let's see the result. You see the new order of drawing. And another thing concerning the formula effector, 
we entered our scaling factor of 2 manually but the formula effector offers other possibilities to play around so you don't have to retype this factor every time by hand instead you can use a built-in variable that comes with the formula effector and that is the frequency it is a custom slider that we can use to replace our scaling factor and now we can freely experiment with the scaling factor let me first hide our mouse spline generator so we can better see the results I'll hide now our spline mask and reveal only the mouse spline generator I won't bore you with step-by-step -step instructions suffice to say that you then add a camera pointing straight to our figure and animate it going towards the center match the start and end frame to add more variation animate the rotation for the figure to a multiple of 60 degrees so that the start and end frames match and in the end add a hair material to the most blind object that's it this concludes my second video on the subject of drawing and animating splines in Cinema 4D. But there are still more to come, so keep an eye on this channel, maybe subscribe, you decide. Don't hesitate to write me a comment if you need more details and please do share the knowledge. I'll be back, I promise. Bye.